Good morning and welcome to the world famous Lone Twig of Buttermere. Isn't it magnificent? So as you can see, today I'm here at Buttermere. It's a bit grey, very flat, not particularly inspiring, but at least it isn't raining. If you saw my last video, which I actually filmed yesterday, you'll realise that avoiding the rain is my number one priority today. So I'm starting early and we'll probably have a reasonably early finish because the forecast for this afternoon doesn't look very good at all. But today I'm not here on my own. I've got a mate with me. So let me introduce you to him. Allow me to introduce you to my mate, Jeff. This is Jeff, Jeff Ogden. And if you're a YouTuber, uh, a landscape photographer, you probably know Jeff because you support quite a lot of channels, don't you? I do. And we'll come back to that in a minute, but Jeff's staying with me this week and you're joining James and I for a workshop at Rider Water on Saturday. Correct, yeah. I came all the way over here from California for the workshop, so I'm so looking forward to it. Been promised perfect conditions, so I'm quite looking forward to it. That's right, and so as Jeff says, he's from California. And so how do you think our Lone Tree of Buttermere stacks up against your Californian redwoods? Well, I'm still looking for the tree. There's something right here <laughs> in front of the water, but uh, I'm still looking for that tree. I've heard about it. Je Jeff and I uh, were joking on the way up here because I, I really hate the Buttermere Lone Tree. Um, not for any reason other than it's been photographed so many times, it's very difficult to add something new. Are you going to add something new to it this morning? I, I quite highly doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you watch, as we said, I said earlier, you watch an awful lot of YouTube channels and you're very, very supportive. You leave a lot of comments and you're always very supportive in your comments. So, it, you know, you do watch an awful lot of YouTube. You're, I think you're an authority on the subject. Hmm. So who do you think is the best landscape photographer on YouTube? Well, that's a loaded question, Chris. Um, there's so many. I, I do follow them, and they're they're genuinely interesting, and and uh, so many talented people. I, I quite like the the James Byrne channel. I think that's probably that's up there at the top. Where are you going, Chris? <sighs> James Burns. I mean, I ask you now because Jeff has missed the opportunity to massage my massively overinflated ego. I'm now going on strike. So it's over to Jeff to talk you through this composition. Well, apparently I gave the wrong answer and I've hurt Chris's feelings and he's off sulking and pouting somewhere. So rather than just have a, a have the camera running with no one in front of it, I'll step in front and, and do my best here. First, let me just say that I'm far from an experienced photographer. I'm an enthusiast. I really enjoy it and uh, I love the whole process. But for me, one of the most difficult aspects is composition. And uh, so when it comes to composition, I always struggle artistically with what to do and how to frame up a shot, how to compose a shot. And uh, coming here to Buttermere, um, if there's one shot that just about anyone can get, it's probably this lone tree. There's really just a couple of things that you're trying to do. Like to smooth the water out, certainly like to have a little bit more interesting background than we've got today, and just simply position the tree so that it's between the, the V and the, in the peaks and the distance there. Uh, I'd give you the names, but I'm, I'm rubbish with names, so I don't know. But uh, that's basically all it is, long exposure, trying to smooth the water out. It's a little windy today, so there's no way to keep the tree from moving around. So it's not gonna be a great shot, but uh, as far as composition goes, this is the best we can do. Well, didn't he do well? A little too well, if you ask me. And we'll have a little bit more from Jeff later on if I haven't pushed him in the lake. Anyway, I'm now gonna take on this shot and I'm gonna do pretty much the same as Jeff. There are a few differences. The first thing that I've done is I've put on my 16 to 35 millimeter wide angle lens. And by strange coincidence, Jeff was actually at, with me at the time when I bought this lens. And he's always encouraging me to use it um, we call it the Santa Claus lens because it only really comes out once a year, but that's not actually true. I'm actually using it a bit more now. So I've come closer and I'm making more use of the foreground. So we've got some reads in the foreground and there's also some reflections of the tree. 
And I've still got the tree in exactly the same position as Jeff had it. I've got it in the gap between the hills. The one on the right's flipped with pike. Um, and the other thing is I'm not doing a long exposure. I'm just doing an exposure of about um, 0.4 of a second, something like that. And I've also popped a grad on just to make the most of the sky, really darken that sky down. It's only a two-stop grad, so it's not going to do too much to the top of the tree. Um, and that's it. I'm just going to take the shot. Ah, portrait orientation as well. Normally what I would do for YouTube is I'd shoot in landscape orientation, put that in the video, and do a portrait orientation shot for something like Instagram. But I don't think this shot works uh, this close to the tree at this wide an angle using landscape orientation. What it does is it brings in too much of the right hand side and that really unbalances the frame. The hills on the on the right hand side are very unbalanced. So for, for a very rare occasion I'm just going to shoot this in portrait orientation. Lovely. Just so that you can see exactly what I mean when I say that the composition is unbalanced when you shoot in landscape orientation, I'm going to take a shot now just to show you. So what I, what I mean by that is that the hills on the right hand side, shooting at 16mm, uh, which is, you, know, you need to be that wide in order to get the tree and these reflections in, what it does is it includes far too much stuff on the right hand side and that's far too dominant um, in the frame. And so that's what I mean by when I say it's, it's unbalanced. James is your favourite channel. Who's your second favourite channel? Second favourite? Tough choice. There's a lot of great ones out there. Um, I quite like Julian Baird's channel. That's, a, uh, that's one that I watch quite frequently. Julian Baird? He's not even my second favourite channel. Actually, that's not true. I really like Julian's channel, but we're good mates, so I would never, ever admit that to him. Anyway, as Jeff's punishment, he's now gonna walk you through his next composition. Right, well, while Chris is off, uh, off doing his vlogging, I, I had a little wander down around the edge of the lake here. And again, as I mentioned, I'm up here visiting uh, for a week and I've come a long way from California, spent some other time in the UK prior, but um, when you come up to do photography, you can't always count on the conditions. So uh, what are you going to do? You're going to stand here and just take one shot of the lone tree and then say, oh, the light's no good. Don't do anything else. So continue down uh, walking the edge of the lake. And I came across another little tree here. Uh, it's nothing fantastic, but it kind of caught my eye just because there's some tentacles going into the water and the, the tree, if you position the camera correctly, it'll stand out a little bit. So I came over here and, and kind of framed it up. It's nothing great, but I kind of liked it. It's a little different. And uh, so I, I framed up a shot here, a little bit of a long exposure like the previous shot. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I quite like it. It's something a little bit different. So we'll see how it comes out. About a 30 second exposure here with a six stop. And um, this tree is a little bit, uh, little bit more robust, so it's not gonna move around in the wind. So it may look a little bit better from that standpoint. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, look creative editing, you never know. Might uh, actually look decent. So we'll see. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Something a little different. So what do you think of that second shot from Jeff there? I, I really like it. What I like most about it is Jeff's put his own spin on this scene. It's obviously Buttermere because you've got Fleetwith Pike in the background. And we've all come here and we've all shot the Lone Tree and you must have seen it hundreds of times. 
Um, and we, we struggle to add anything new to it, but what Jeff has done is he's picked out something that is unique to him, um, in it, or at least has been shot a lot less than the tree. So yeah, I really like that. I find that quite inspiring because it's not something that I'm very good at. Generally, I would stick to the classics. I feel quite inspired by Jeff having to go at something a bit different, so I'm going to try and do the same. Now, I've got, I'm have not being quite as brave as Jeff. Uh, I'm still shooting quite wide. Now, I've got this patch of trees on the left-hand side, and I like the way that they lean into the frame and they draw the eye off towards Fleetwith Pike in the distance. And Fleetwith Pike is the most dominant mountain in the view from this end of Buttermere. So I still want that in the frame because it gives some context as to where I am. It's still obviously Buttermere. So if James is number one and Julian's number two, who's number three? Number three. I have to go with Dave Griffith. I like his channel a lot. To be fair, he's very good. Well, we had a great morning here considering the uh, weather forecast, so can't really complain, but it's starting to chuck it down a bit here now. So wanted to get one more shot in here if we could. Um, I've come across a, another tree, it seems to be the theme of the day. And uh, again, quite like this one, lots of moss on it. Uh, nothing, nothing complicated about it other than trying to position myself. There's always compromises in the uh, composition, but I think I've done the best I can. So uh, not having a weather sealed camera, I'm holding my brolly and trying to stay dry. But one last shot here, it's just again, basic shot, uh, facing down just a little bit, trying to get a little bit of sharpness from front to back here and hoping that uh, there's enough contrast here to make this an interesting shot. We'll see what happens. Eh, I think there might be something there. We'll see. It looks like for the second day running, the weather's beaten us. It's raining pretty hard now and it's, it, the wind's picking up. So we're gonna have a bit of breakfast, um, but before I go, I just wanna thank Jeff for, for taking us through his compositions. And we've talked today about the channels that you watch and the channels that you enjoy. And you know, the guys that you've talked about, they're all amateur landscape photographers who do YouTube on the side. What is it that you specifically like about them and their approach? That's a great question. It's interesting how I end up following certain people is is a, a kind of a mystery. It's sort of a, a web as you get started with one channel and you get a recommendation or a, something comes up and you follow it to another. And uh, the truth is, uh, the channels that I follow, I, I just get so much out of them. They're inspirational. The, the people, the personalities that are involved, they're all unique, they're all different. And uh, they're just such genuine people. And that's what comes across on their videos. And you can tell by the the interaction that you get in the comments and th uh -huh. that's what I find about YouTube that's uh, so unique and, and so much better than, than the other platforms that are used for photography purposes. So I, I get a tremen tremendous amount of enjoyment from, from following and interacting with people, I really do. Okay, cool. And if you haven't if you haven't seen videos from James, Julian or David before, I do recommend that you go and check out their channels. I'll leave a description in the link below.